What does the cross mean to you? Ask them, what does the cross mean to you? See, we got to take this in an individual affair. What does the cross mean to me? Amen. When we think about this holiday of Easter, amen, Easter, amen, is, you know, a, according to the world standpoint, has become, you know, so commercialized, kind of like Christmas is, you know, the devil will do whatever he can do to take the attention off of Christ. Amen. When you think about Christmas, amen, the world wants you just to think about Santa Claus. And when you think about Easter, amen, the world wants you just to think about a Easter bunny. But what you have to realize, amen, is the purpose of Easter, amen, has nothing to do with a bunny, amen, but it was about the life, the death, and the resurrection, amen, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why we can stand up and testify, amen, thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, amen, and filled with the Holy Ghost because what he did over 2,000 years ago amen what we could not do for ourselves amen one thing that we have to realize amen we can enjoy our salvation we can enjoy shouting we can enjoy amen lifting our hands amen we can enjoy amen the things that come with salvation amen and all we have to do to be saved is to come down to this altar lift our hands in the air and say Lord forgive me for all of my sins but what you have to realize that something else, uh, amen, went on behind the scenes, uh, amen, a price had to be paid uh, so that you can enjoy what we now know as salvation, amen, because one thing that we have to realize is everybody that was born into this world was born into sin and shaped in iniquity. Amen. The Bible talks about God's creation. When God created the heavens and the earth, he created the heavens and the earth in seven days. Amen. After seven days, he was finished. Amen. And we think about everything that God spoke into creation. Amen. He said, let there be light. Amen. And there was life. Amen. He divided, amen, the night and the day. Amen. He spoke the animals into existence. Amen. But the Bible says when he got to man, God didn't speak man into existence, but the Bible says God formed man out of the dust of the the earth and not only formed man but the bible says god formed them out of, out of his image amen and one thing that we have to understand the significance amen of being born or being formed in the image of god Amen. Thank God for, amen, my two kids, amen. They were born in our image, me and my wife, amen. And it could be 10, 20, 30 years from now, we could be dead and gone, amen. But as long as they're walking on this earth, amen, they're going to carry a piece of Jonathan and Carolyn Halton uh, everywhere that they go. And that's what God ordained for us, amen. When God created man, God created us with the intent to show forth his glory, uh, amen, and his power wherever we go. Amen. But one thing that we have to understand, amen, that's why the enemy does not like you. That's why he doesn't like us. Amen. Some of us talk about, amen, I make a deal with the devil. Huh? Amen. The devil is my friend. But let me tell you something. The devil is not your friend. Huh? Amen. There's nothing that you can do to cause the devil to like you because every time the devil sees you, he sees God. Amen. And he hates God. So therefore he hates you. Huh? Amen. Because we were born in the image of God. Amen. That's why when the devil, amen, we know the story, amen, how he deceived Eve, amen, and he caused Adam to rebel against God, amen, and the Bible says Adam brought sin into this world. Amen. He brought sin in mankind because what you have to realize, God gave Adam dominion over the garden. He gave him rule over the garden. Amen. And he told Adam, he said, the day you eat of the fruit of the tree, you shall surely die. Now, one thing you have to understand, amen, in theological terms, death means separation. Amen. So even though when Adam sinned, he didn't die naturally to almost a thousand years later, when he sinned against God, he died spiritually. Amen. He was in a state where he was separate from God. Amen. And we have a lot of people now. Amen. They're alive. Amen. They're walking. They're in good health. Amen. They get up to go to work every morning. Amen. They go wash their cars. They go through everyday life. They're alive naturally, but spiritually they're dead. Amen. And that was the state of Adam. And because he ate of the forbidden fruit, amen, the Bible said, amen, he brought the curse on mankind. Because what you have to realize that any type of kingdom, amen, when something happens to the one who's in charge or to the representative, it affects everybody down. That's why the Bible says that we were all born in sin and shaped 
in iniquity. Amen. But one thing that you have to realize, just like I said earlier, it was the purpose of God, amen, creating us to fellowship with us and to show forth, amen, his glory in us. So God didn't want to spend eternity with mankind, amen, but in order for God to spend eternity with us, amen, then that sinful nature, that sin in us had to be taken care of, amen. In order for that sin to be taken care of, that means that somebody had to die. Because the Bible said, without the shedding of blood, there should be no remission of sins. Amen. And the only one that could die, who was worthy to die for the sins of you and I, amen, was Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a lot of great men in the Bible who, could, who, who many may think that could have been qualified to do it. Amen. You may think Moses was qualified. Amen. The Bible says that when Moses died, amen, he walked so close for God, they didn't even have a funeral procession for him, that God buried him himself. Amen. But Moses wasn't qualified to redeem us from our sins. Amen. Somebody may say Jeremiah. Amen. Jeremiah prophesied to Judah. God called him when he was a little boy. Amen. He was a prophet of God. Amen. But when we look at Jeremiah's life, amen, Jeremiah got locked up in prison and the people rejected him. And he was ready to throw in the towel. So he, he was ready to throw in the towel because people rejected him. He surely would have went through with the whole crucifixion. Amen. We think about David and all these other great men of God. Uh, amen. But the only one that had the blood that was powerful enough to redeem us from our sins uh, was the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So God sent his only begotten son, wrapped them in the form, uh, amen, of sinful flesh. He came down through 40, uh, amen, in two generations. Uh, amen. The Bible said that he was born of a seed of a woman. Uh, amen. And one thing that you have to understand, amen, a woman doesn't have seed, uh, amen, but a woman has eggs. But the Bible said that which was conceived in her was not a man, but it was of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Jesus, amen, at the age of 33, he went on his mission. Amen. He took the nails in his hand, the crown of thorns on his head, and the spear in his side, just so that he, just so you and I may have a right to the tree of life. Now, one thing that we have to realize when Jesus died for us, we have to realize what happened, amen, in our lives. Amen. How he enabled us us. Amen. To come to know him as our Lord and personal faith Savior. First of all, we have to remember, uh, amen, that when Jesus died, he allowed us to be justified. Somebody say justified. justified. Justification means, amen, that we are declared righteous before God. Amen. And isn't that, amen, a blessing out of everything that some of us did? Uh, amen. Some of us were alcoholics. Some of us were drug dealers, drug pushers. Uh, amen. Some of us did some things in our life. Like Paul said, amen, it would be even a shame to even think of. Uh, amen. But isn't it good to know that all we have to do is come down to this altar, uh, lift our hands toward heaven, say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Uh, amen. And he declares us righteous before him. Amen. The criminal justice system can't even do that. Uh, amen. Don't you know in the criminal justice system, amen, if you get something on your permanent record, uh, amen, if you get a felony that'll follow you all the days of your life, uh, amen, I don't care, amen, if you, amen, get, get out in 10 years and 15 years and declared free, amen, if you try to get a job, amen, if you try to get certain things, amen, they'll pull up your criminal record, uh, amen, and that thing will stay on there, but when it comes to God, God don't operate like that, amen. When he just you, amen. He puts you in a position uh, just like you've never done anything, uh, amen. And that's what we have to realize, uh, amen. When God forgives us for all of our sins, uh, amen, we have the peace of mind in knowing uh, that now we have been declared righteous before God. Amen. And that's what the devil does not want you to realize. Uh, amen. Because some of us can't enjoy the joy of living saved. Uh, amen. Because we can forgive everybody else. Uh, amen. But the one person that we have a hard time forgiving is ourselves. Amen. We can't forgive ourselves. And the devil is right there. Huh? Amen. Trying to accuse you. Huh? Remember when you did this. Huh? Remember when you used to do that. Huh? Amen. Remember who you used to be. Remember who when you did this back in this year. And remember when you did that back in that year. Huh? Amen. That's why you're in the shape that you're in. Huh? Amen. But you have to realize. Huh? Amen. That's the reason that I got a reason to praise God. Huh? Amen. Because I used to do this. Huh? And I used to do that. Huh? And I used to be this. And I used to be that. Huh? Amen. But when I went to a meeting one night huh? and my heart wasn't right huh? the Holy Ghost got a hold of me huh? now the things that I used to do I don't do no more huh? the places I used to go I don't go anymore huh? the things I used to say I don't say anymore huh? because I've been changed by the power of God huh? that's why I have a right to praise him huh? because he did for me what I couldn't do for myself 
And that's why some of us struggle. Huh? Amen. The devil is sitting there trying to accuse us, huh? trying to keep us in bondage of the things that we used to do. Huh? Amen. But what you have to realize when you went down to the altar and God saved you, huh? he justified you, huh? which means I don't care what you did in your past. He declared you righteous before God. Then what happened? Amen. God sent you to a process called regeneration. Uh, amen. And that means, amen, the process in which you became that new creature. Mm, amen. And you know what? I have a problem with a lot of people now. Uh, they're saying I'm saved and I'm going to church and, and this, that, and the other. But you don't even see the new creature. Amen. People say, I've been saved 20 years. Huh? And they look like the same person they were 25 years ago. But when God regenerates you or you makes you a new creature, you're not going to do those same things that you used to do. Amen. You're not going to listen to the same things that you used to listen to. Huh? Amen. I don't care what your profession is. Huh? Amen. If you used to listen to blues when you get saved, huh? you don't listen to blues no more. Huh? You don't listen to R&B no more. Huh? Because the Bible says if any man come after me, huh? he has to deny himself, take up his cross, huh? and follow me. Except the man be born again. Huh? He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That's called regeneration, huh? Amen. And you see, it bothers me when people get on TV, huh? Amen. And just because they have a certain, amen, status in society, huh? Amen. Just because they may be an entertainer, huh? They believe that they can tell the church, amen, what salvation really is, huh? Amen. They, they cussing and lying and doing all this stuff, huh? Amen. And I believe some of these people really have a heart to go after God, huh? Amen. But then they try to come up and tell us what holiness really is, huh? Amen. What salvation really is, huh? Amen. Just because they're an entertainer, huh? Or they got millions of dollars. Huh? Amen. But what you have to realize, God is looking for somebody. Huh? Amen. That's not intimidated by their social status. Huh? God is looking for somebody that's not intimidated by their money. Huh? Amen. That's got enough backbone to tell them. Huh? Amen. That you can't live two lives and be saved. Huh? Amen. I don't care. Amen. Huh? Amen. What your status is. Huh? You can't be cussing on Wednesday night. Huh? And then trying to preach on Thursday night. Huh? Amen. God is looking for somebody. Huh? Amen. That's got enough backbone to tell some of these people. Huh? Amen. That if you just got to be an attainer, huh? amen, you better get you some balls and juggle them or something, huh? because when you come over to the Lord's side, huh? the Bible says if any man be in Christ, huh? he is a new creature, huh? all things pass away, huh? and all things become new, huh? the things you used to do you don't want to do anymore, huh? the place you used to go, you don't want to go anymore, huh? the things you used to say, you don't want to say anymore, huh? because I've been regenerated. 